Welcome back. Today is week 12 waiver wire report brought to you as always by fantasy6pack.net. I'm your host JP or DAP Scout on Twitter and we invite you to always come on down to fantasy6pack.net, become an all access subscriber where you can get the latest amazing waiver wire report like you will today. We'll be going over the six that are on the free preview. And you can get the full waiver wire report, which goes sometimes 20, 30, 40 names deep um, at any given time for all of our all access members. Um, also, as an all access member, you can talk to me on Discord. Uh, ask me like, hey, Dap, uh, you know, we have these three, four names and this is what my roster looks like. And I'll dive deep and try to help you figure out who fits where and how can we help you win. All right. Without much further ado, let's get into our waiver wire with our very first name, somebody I have been championing as much as possible on Twitter, uh, in my bubble bath, everywhere I possibly can, and that's David Hamilton. Uh, Jared Carabas, uh just you know basically takes the words right out of my mouth here, and that's why I love, love this tweet. It's so succinct. David Hamilton is literally the best hitter on the Red Sox, and he's probably the best hitter that you're not uh, rostering right now. Uh, he's guaranteed to be better than your third best outfielder, unless you're like in an eight team league or a 10 team dynasty with your family that you've absolutely been destroying. David Hamilton is killing it right now. And to prove this, let me show you what he's done over the last seven games and 15 games. So the last seven, this is just absurd. Uh, the last seven games, amazingly enough, the same average in OBP, which I just love. And his slugging percentage is 567. So his OPS is 867. Thank you, David, for making that so easy for me to do in my head. Two home runs, four RBIs. Yes, the 11 strikeouts, but five stolen bases in the last seven games. He's going to help you with his stolen bases. He's helping you an average OBP. Uh, well, OBP a little bit, but I mean, you know, there's definitely a lot worse out there. And we'll go here in a second and show you how much better. And he's getting on base and scoring runs. 15 games out, so eight more games back. You have a 309, 333, so definitely helping you with an OPP. And the slugging percentage goes down a little bit because he's only had those two home runs over the last 15 games. But again, five RBIs, you know, seven stolen bases. So the reason why you're picking him up is to help you at least in three categories, right? Average, possibly OBP, stolen bases, and runs scored. But he's chipping in in all categories. I love it. He's an absolute must-add, urgent Format independent at all times. We used to be telling you like, hey, pick up David Hamilton and, you know, 15 teamers or AL only. Right now he's so hot and he's getting so much playing time. He deserves to be picked up in all formats. So definitely run out and get David Hamilton right now. And the other thing too is in a lot of leagues, again, depending on what you're doing, he's second base and shortstop eligible. So something, you know, two positions that, Definitely need some help uh, in kind of the depth category. So David Hamilton's our number one with like highlighted, underlined, bold, everything else. <laughs> Go pick him up. All right. Second name. And we covered him last show as well in our Bad Boys episode, right? That I really wanted to do the theme song for. But Noel B. Marte. Noel B. Marte is in his you know, minor league rehab. I, I don't know what else to call it. Uh, you know, getting ready to get off suspension. What do you call that? Ramp up period? Uh, rehab sounds really weird considering he was, you know, for PEDs. But um, I love this because it's kind of funny to me. Uh, Natty Sports, uh, Natty underscore sports on Twitter. Melvin Marte still looking beefy. Love to see it. Took care of himself when he wasn't playing, it appears. What, of course, he's alluding to is the fact that, you know, we don't know what we have here with Marte. You know, uh, were the PEDs the main reason why he was so good? Uh, and He's striking out a ton in the minors, but we kind of expected that, right? No matter how well you get ready in the offseason, you're not going to have 20 different pitchers and different arm slots and different pitch mixes and all those things. And that's going to take a little bit of a ramp-up period. But I guarantee you, you cannot find a better third baseman upside just on the waiver wire. Noelle Marte needs to be rostered right now. If your team... Uh, the teams that you're going up against somehow are still sleeping and not watching our show since we've been talking about Marte for almost two weeks now, go out and get him. He's going to be a great lottery ticket because if he's even 80% of the player that he was showing us last season in that 
amazing home run friendly ballpark that they play at home half their games he's going to help your team he's going to help dominate in almost every category including chipping in with some steals as well yes we don't know what you know we're here to see but let, let's just look a little bit here okay so in 2024 so far we've had uh, 14 plate appearances two runs scored 35 strikeouts again i'm, I'm not even that worried about it uh, and a 286 average yes 444 batting average balls in play but Let's go back to what we kind of were seeing last year when he was kind of breaking out, uh, you know, in the major leagues, when he dropped in the prospect rankings, like in the forties. And I was like, that's way too low. Sometimes you just see a prospect for so long, kind of like what happened with Jason Dominguez. A lot of people were like, Oh, you know, is he as good as he is? And then Dominguez came out and showed everybody Marte same way. You know, people just kind of got, you know, bored like, Oh, it's Marte. And he came out and he, Six stolen bases. People were calling him slow, remember? And I think he, like his first game, he stole a base. I, I remember so many like, he's so slow, he's lost a step. 15 runs scored, three home runs, and again, an amazing home ballpark, even better than Colorado. So 22-year-old, he's rested half the season, not on purpose. Go pick him up. You will not find a better lottery ticket out there, and I guarantee you, the other thing is too, and I'm sorry, I was about to say, I guarantee you, blah, blah, blah. But the other thing is too, is that, you know, compared to what we saw in the preseason where we're like, where's he going to play if he comes back? There's so much playing time available now with injuries and underperformance and all that stuff. Marte is guaranteed a uh, starting lineup spot. So go pick up Marte. You're going to love it. And you're going to thank me a hundred times on Twitter. All right. The next name. And this is the reason, and we're going to have back-to-back White Sox here. So you're like, well, that, why? Because bad teams start calling up good players and the White Sox are a terrible team. And Drew Thorpe is somebody we were excited about. And he showed out in his major league debut. Yes, there were some definite mistakes, but he's a rookie. We expected that. And he's not playing against a terrible team. He's playing against the Seattle Mariners. Drew Thorpe's MLB debut. This is Chai Sox fan Mike uh, on Twitter. Five innings pitch, three hits, one earned run, two walks, four, four Ks. And again, the CSW, right? Uh, uh, 11 swings and misses. We didn't get the call strikes, but 11 swings and misses, which is good because again, you're fooling the major league hitters, which is something you want to see, especially from somebody just called up. So let's see what he's uh, doing as well. And I love Jake's comment here a little bit low. Clearly didn't have his top command either. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, you know, this guy has been uh, command. Look, look at this preseason ranking, right? In fan grass. They expected it to be at 70 grade upside command. So if he's not at his top command, he definitely has a roof to that. I mean, a, 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 a ways to go there, improvement as well. And so in 2024 in double A, he came up from double A, forgot to mention that. I mean, skipped a whole level, went straight to the majors. Talking about a guy who is walking two and a half uh, walks per nine, uh, but only 8.4K. So he's not a huge, he's not going to be a huge strikeout guy, but he is going to get his strikeouts, as we can see. Uh, I expect those walks to come down. And again, Considering what's out there and considering he definitely is going to have some run with the White Sox a starting rotation unless they do something stupid, which I don't even know anymore. I mean, unless they get like some crazy uh, return for Luis Robert. Uh, definitely think that uh, Thorpe stays in the starting rotation for a while. And uh, frankly, looking at an expected FIP, uh, yeah, I mean, there's some regression. I, I expect an ERA around three and a half. Let's put it that way. Uh, just calling it out and maybe five, six strikeouts a game. Great. And he keeps the walk out. So he's going to help you in a lot of different categories. Keep your whip down. I, I, I love everything I'm seeing there. And again, playing time's key here, especially with pitchers and all the injuries that we're having. All right. So get some Drew Thorpe. Now for the other White Sox. Paul DeJong. Oh, no. I had to like look twice. Not Paul DeJong with the Cardinals. And for the first time ever, we're highlighting an account that I love. A Twitter account that I absolutely love. It's me. <laughs> it's me. It's a Dap Scout on Twitter. Um, I love this quote from Connor Thormier, uh, the guy who writes our waiver wire. We talk every week. Uh, the waiver wire report about Paul DeJong. Over the last 14 days, it was a great quote, and I couldn't remember uh, it all, so I had to put it on Twitter here. Uh, over the last 14 days, he slashed 250, 302, 688 with a 170. Again, 100 is average. WRC plus. He has six home runs, three doubles, nine runs, and 11 RBIs. His six home runs are only second to Aaron Judge. And Aaron Judge is unconscious. Like, he's historical. I think he's on pace to hit, like, 
9,000 home runs for the season. And his run production lacks a bit, but he's still in the top 25 in runs scored and RBIs. He's just crazy. Now, we talked about this last week. You've got to have at least one position available in your roster for that guy who's just incredibly hot and be able to jump away from him once he cools down. Paul DeJong is playing like that right now. He absolutely is not this good. You don't get this good suddenly at 30 and uh, almost 31 and figure out, oh, like I'm, I was always this good. Absolutely not, right? Yeah, even on his best year in the St. Louis, he hit 30 home runs, 97 runs scored, 78 RBIs. That's not happening again. I just, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I mean, not, not the RBIs for sure, not with the Chicago White Sox. But the power is there. I we highlighting him because he's somebody that you want to probably roster for the next week, maybe two, pushing three, uh, and, and and be ready to of course drop him once he gets cold. But he's got the playing time. Chicago's not putting him anywhere. They're gonna ride the hot hand. They just need warm bodies that are performing at this point. And Paul DeJong is just just showing out in every way, shape, and form. And shortstop, so well, shortstop for me is a, a problem area. So I definitely picked up Paul DeJong last week. And I've been writing this hot streak everywhere. So again, Paul DeJong is kind of a short-term waiver wire ad. I don't expect this to be a, you know, a month, two month thing, but for the time being, just enjoy it. I just enjoy the Paul DeJong experience, so to speak. And speaking of which, let's talk about his old team, the St. Louis, St. Louis Cardinals, who are probably like, hey, Paul, what's the deal? But we're not talking about uh, Paul DeJong again. We're talking about Kyle Gibson. And Kyle Gibson, what's the deal? This is another short-term ad. Uh, With all the pitcher uh, issues that we're having, Kyle Gibson's playing like Kyle Gibson five years ago, uh, four. We'll have to look at his stats, but definitely not recent Kyle Gibson. Uh, Just did an amazing job in his last game out uh, just a few days ago, uh, yesterday. Uh, Seven innings pitched, two hits, one walk, six strikeouts, and zero earned runs. Uh, and that's from the Cardinals uh, wonderful Twitter official Twitter. Now Kyle has not been doing this. I mean, he's been bounced all over the place, Minnesota, Texas, Philly, Baltimore, where we've seen him do six, four, three, five, five, three, four, five, three, five, four. That is not a phone number. <laughs> that's his ERA. Uh, so again, and his, he's been, it's expected FIP was lower in most cases. I'm just quickly looking in some. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely he's kind of been uh, performing worse than his metrics. But what we have seen is just a low strikeout, uh, some t- around three walk per nine. And if he stays away from the home run ball, he's doing pretty good, which he typically does, about a one. Um, so what is he doing differently? I, man, I, I'm not a pitcher uh, expert by any means. What I do know is that when I look at a guy who only – three times in the last 10 years, 11 years has been below a four and is suddenly way below a four ERA. I don't need to look much else unless he's suddenly figured out, you know, a whole new pitch and figured out, Hey, maybe I shouldn't throw like this. Maybe I'll throw it underhand, whatever the case may be. I'm just not buying it. Uh, St. Louis has been always been a pitching development house, but they've been terrible this year in a lot of different areas and veterans have not been doing good this year. So I can't, like put my hat on that. What I can say is that again, I don't expect this to last. And with all the pitching issues that we've had out there, I think Kyle Gibson is a good short-term ad, but once he gets blown up, once he has that blow up game, drop him. (laughs) I I don't expect this again to be another thing. So Paul DeJong, Kyle Gibson, short-term ads, um, enjoy the ride while you can. All right. I love this name by the way. And I'm a little angry about it, but if you've ever listened to me on our Fantasy Six Pack Hour, uh, you know that I love me some David Schneider. David Schneider, I felt, was being, you know, not allowed to play because of Kevin Biggio. Kevin Biggio was DFA'd, picked up by the Dodgers from Toronto. And I was like, great, the Schneider experience. And then Spencer Horwitz happened. And Spencer Horwitz is either just unconscious and is playing just, you know, easy mode or something. I don't know what it is, but he could not get out. (laughs) And he just gets on base. And David Schneider now, as Mike Curlin, MLB playing time. I I sometimes get the pod uh, cast with Mike. Uh, He's an absolute friend of the show. And he knows 
playing time. So Blue Jays, David Schneider has only started one of the last three games versus right-hand pitcher. I actually was expecting to highlight David Schneider. I was expecting to be like, hey, Kevin Bijo is gone. David Schneider back again. Nope. Spencer Horowitz has taken the role versus right-handed pitching as of now and has hit at the top of the order right there. If you can see it, he's at the top there on second base, which means he gets a lot of at-bats and a lot of chances. Now, um, it says odd considering Schneider has um, actually been notably better versus right-handed pitching so far this year. Uh, but, you know, I think Toronto has put in their chips uh, in on Spencer Schneider. Obviously, Spencer Schneider. I just, I just made both uh, players with one name. Spencer Horowitz, they put their chips in there. David Schneider is um, back on the Schneid. Uh, sorry, that was terrible. But uh, back on the bench. It's just, he's a great player. And I hope he gets to go somewhere where he gets to play. But Spencer Horowitz is hot. Let me show you how hot he is, actually. Uh, right now, he's in six games, 22 plate appearances, two runs scored, two RBIs, zero stolen bases, but only 13 point. Okay, this is silly. 13.6 walks percentage and a 13.6 K percentage 438 BABIP, which of course is going to regress, but a 368 average 455 OBP and a 421 slugging. So the slugging is lower than his OBP. Great. But that still puts you in almost 900 territory, which is phenomenal considering, but look at what he did again in triple a in the 57 games. He played four home runs, 41 runs scored three stolen bases and 38 RBIs. And we're looking again, almost exactly, right? 17% uh, percent walk and 15.8% K rate uh, in the minors as well. So this is not unheard of, right? He's a very balanced player. He's somebody that Eric Cross, um, a lot of different guys that I have a lot of respect for um, that are minor league, um, Chris Clegg, that I've talked about him quite a lot. And he's uh, always kind of leading everything. Look at his WRC plus that he had this year, 158. Again, he's 151 right now. He is... Shown that he can do it. Now, those runs being scored, that's going to depend on his teammates. As you know, if you followed baseball at all, Toronto's been terrible this year. We expected a lot more than him, and they are just not doing anything. And that's across the board. Offense, pitching, everything. So for us to, you know, get on him for that, it's not really, you know, obviously, it's a team sport. But I do expect that uh, the runs and the RBIs that come into play, if there's people that get on base, if you need somebody who is, Basically, Luis Arez of the AL, or north of the border, shall I, shall I say, the Canadian Luis Arez, uh, you have him right here, Spencer Horowitz. Uh, right now, he doesn't have much other things in stats, but he has a great average in OBP, and he can help you out there. So if you're getting killed there, go grab some Spencer Horowitz. All right. Well, what can I say other than our time together has been just too short? And I can't thank you enough again for the time, uh, you know, giving us a chance to help you out and win your fantasy league. If you have any questions, reach out to me on Twitter, uh, comment and like this particular video. And I always kind of follow the comments so I can answer some questions there as well. And as always, try to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week at week 13. Thanks.